that my homegrown strawberries see a whole lot of action in the kitchen, usually I just pick them and eat them the very same day. But when I do get quite a few and I want to make something special like crisp, they usually turn all mushy and get kind of gross looking. Sarah, what am I doing wrong? You're not doing anything wrong, Danielle. Strawberries are just one of those fruits that are at their best when they're uncooked. They give off so much water when you bake them that they just kind of collapse. And while baking blueberries or raspberries will intensify the flavor, with strawberries it just kind of makes them blah. So popping them into my mouth right out of the garden isn't such a bad idea, huh? Not at all. But if you want to dress them up, I like to make strawberry shortcake because the berries aren't baked at all. They're just macerated. Maso. Huh? <laughs> what are you talking Macerated. about? Macerated. It's like the fruit equivalent of marinating. Oh, okay. That sounds pretty good. How do we get started? So we start with a pound of strawberries here and we're just going to hull them. Okay. And it's best if instead of cutting straight across, which is quicker, if you cut out the hull in a cone shape, that just leaves you with more of the berry to eat. And we want to preserve all that flavor that we can. All right. That looks good. All right. Now, if you want to start slicing these guys up, I'm going to grab about a third of them. Slicing them just in half? Um, do it more in slices, about a quarter inch thick. Okay. I'm going to give these just a rough mash with a potato masher. And why are you doing that? Well, with shortcake, you want the juices to really drench the biscuit. So this just helps bring out some of the juices. Oh. But then we'll still have chunks from our sliced berries. Give you a hand with the rest of these. I'm slow. Mashing is faster than slicing. You can just add them in there. That's okay. Now we just want to give these guys a stir. And we'll add about two tablespoons of granulated sugar. Oh, and this is the macerating part. Exactly. So the sugar almost does the work of cooking. It draws out the juices and intensifies them. Makes the strawberries a little more tender, though they won't completely collapse. And of course, brings out their sweetness too. Of course, because these guys are so sweet, they hardly need it. So just a light toss? Yep. And now we're going to set this aside for about an hour, and meanwhile, we'll make the biscuits. Ooh, biscuits. Okay, so I see you have quite an array of stuff gathered here, Sarah. What are we doing now? This is our biscuit making apparatus. All right. First, we've got our flour. We're just going to pass that through a sieve to sift it. Now, I've always it. wanted to ask, why do they call for sifted flour? Well, it basically just aerates the flour, so oh, it helps okay. it combine. But it's important that you read the recipe, whether it says for, you know, one cup of sifted flour or one cup of flour sifted. Okay. Most of the time, you want to sift after you measure. Oh, okay. Good to know. So this is nine ounces of flour, which we then sift. Okay. And then we just add our other dry ingredients. Okay. We've got some... Granulated sugar, All right. baking powder, baking soda. Thank you. And a little salt. Of course. Of course. Whisk it together. Now we have a stick of butter that I've cut into small pieces. We're just going to add that to our dry ingredients. Now wouldn't it make more sense to get melted butter and then it would all combine faster? That would combine it really well, but you actually don't want to combine it super well. You want to keep the butter in large chunks as you do this because that's what will keep it nice and tender as it bakes up. How does this look, Sarah? Uh, that's pretty close. You want it to be the texture of coarse cornmeal, so you know, just a little bit more. Okay. And while you're finishing that, I'm just going to mix together our wet ingredients. I've got a quarter cup of buttermilk, quarter cup of heavy cream, one egg. And we'll just whisk that together. Okay, I think I've got coarse cornmeal. That looks great. So just make a well in the center. Is that also known as a hole? Yes. Okay. And we'll pour in the wet ingredients. And then just stir it with a fork to bring everything together. Okay. You don't want to overmix. Just do it just until you have a cohesive dough. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Now, a little more need by hand. We could use a little flour there. It's feeling a little moist. Okay, so why don't you just sprinkle a little flour on the counter there. And then we'll turn out our dough. Give it a sprinkle. Start rolling it out. You want it about three quarters of an inch thick. Okay. Now I'm going to wash my hands. That's a good idea. 
How's that? That looks great. Time to cut out. Okay, can I do the honors? Go ahead. Oh, one thing though, as you're cutting out the biscuits, if you cut straight down instead of twisting, that actually will prevent the sides from sealing up and it'll help your biscuits rise better. Oh, okay. Great. We should get at least six out of here. So let's re-roll the scraps. Okay, so I've been heating the oven to 425 and before I put them in, I just wanna brush the tops of them with a little cream. Okay, like Sp that? Yeah, perfect. And sprinkle with sugar. I'll give them a little sparkle. Help them brown too. And make them sweet. Exactly. Okay, so now these just go into the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes until they're nice and golden brown. Okay. Oh, I can smell them already, Sarah. Yeah, they smell great. Are they all done? They are. We just need to let them cool for a minute. And meanwhile, we're going to whip our cream for our shortcake. I've already been chilling the bowl and the whisk. Okay, thanks. Ooh, yep, that's chilly. And why did you chill the bowl and the whisk? Well, cream whips up best when it's cold. Okay. So this just makes sure that it stays really cold and then the whipping will go faster. Oh, okay. Should I start? Yes, you should. I have to take turns. I would do this in my mixer. But why dirty a mixer? Is this true? Oh, I almost forgot. Go ahead and add two tablespoons of sugar. The other nice thing about doing it in a bowl is you won't possibly over whip it. Okay, you'll never get to the butter stage. <laughs> Your arm will give out first. Okay. Now, five hours later. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that looks good. Soft peaks. So we're ready to assemble. Okay. So grab the strawberries. And grab a couple of plates. And I'll just cut these in half. You can tell they're very tender, actually, because they're fragile. I love how they're crystallized on the top. Yep. The sugar. a layer of berries. All those juices soaking into the biscuit mm. from our potato masher. I like to put a little bit more strawberries and cream on top too. Well, mine's not Beautiful. as pretty as yours, <laughs> but I'm sure it tastes just as good. All right, let's dig in. Mmm. Mm. The biscuits are tender and the berries aren't falling apart. This might be better than actually eating them right out of the garden. Mm -hmm.